So I am recording another video uh, to demonstrate to you how I set this up inside of Substance Designer so that we can create the outlook that we get here. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do just before I start anywhere is I'm going to add a uniform color here. You don't need to worry about that. I'm also going to add a uniform color up here. Okay. So again, another uniform color there. Let's go for the white and let's ignore everything else okay so what i'm actually gonna do here is demonstrate to you how i create this process so if i get into the normal map and let's bring the normal map back over here so like i i, I would start by plugging in my opacity mask so if i bring in a bitmap from file uh, choose my opacity and then link the resource I can import my bitmap Now if I run that straight through a normal I can get the normal information of my Texture that I've created however This is not going to be just enough information to work um, We need a lot more information than that. So if you see here If I convert my bitmap into a grayscale and plug this in I get these kind of details here you see now the problem that we have is our opacity on its own there's an amine occlusion plugged in there that's why we have some details so give me one second to find out where the amine occlusion is to remove it amine occlusion not apply just the amine occlusion on its own there it is okay so let's Remove the ambient occlusion. There we go. And then again, that's just the roughness. So we can do the same thing here. Roughness plugged in there. Let's make this not shiny. So there we go. So that's the shape that we're getting just from the mask. Now, obviously, that shape isn't good enough to look like a realistic foliage shape. So what we do is we actually take the grayscale information as well. And we use a normal combine to combine these two together. Okay, now if we combine them, you can see here now we get this much smoother look where not only do we have the shape of the foliage, but we also are starting to have some of these details. Now, obviously, I'm just demonstrating this, so I don't expect you to follow along yet. But as you can see here, we've got both normals plugged in and it looks okay, but we're still missing a lot of details. So what we can actually do is turn the intensity up here. So let's go to four. And I see what's happening is we're really starting to get that shape. We're starting to get those details that we want inside of the foliage. But uh, these ones, no matter what we go to, let's go 12, they're gonna stay very sharp. And that's where we get an issue, where if we look at the normal outcome, it's okay but you know we're, we're having a lot of really pink areas we don't want our normal to look like that we want our normal to look something like this okay so this is what we want this is what we want to achieve so how we do this is very very simple um, and I'm gonna go through the process of demonstrating to you how I did it so if I place that back there Put my normal back in now you can see this is our final normal now it may look quite bubbly and um, very thick we can actually sort that out here without any problems there we go so we've got control so we can actually control how thick or how round our foliage looks there we go and I'm gonna keep that for now Except I do want one more thing. I'm going to turn this up to eight, uh, maybe twenty-four. I'm going to stick to eight for that. Okay, and then I'm going to get another normal from here, and I'm going to just plug that one in above it. Okay, so one more normal combine, and we're going to combine these two together, which is this the final output that could go there. The reason why I'm doing this is because I just want to get those details there that I've missed. So four, four. There we go. Uh, that's a, a, a very
very nice normal for us. Okay. Um, One thing to pay close attention to as well is you'll see that we've got this stepping. It's very important that we change our output format from 8-bit to 16-bit. And this will allow for our stepping to not look so ugly. And we have a normal combine, which we also need to change to 16-bit. That doesn't seem to want to work for me. High quality. There we go. So I'm going to ignore that for a minute and I can come back and sort that out later on. So to achieve this, what I've done is I've create I've taken my opacity mask, and from my opacity mask, I've inverted. Okay, now the reason that I invert is because if I don't invert and I create an ambient occlusion for my opacity mask, what happens is it tries to create an ambient occlusion around my shapes, like you can see here. Now, obviously, our opacity mask is white, which means any of these shadowed or ambient occlusion areas are not going to be visible. So if we invert, we actually can create it on the inside. Okay. So this is what we want to do. We want to create the ambient occlusion on the inside. And so that's why we, the first thing that we do is invert the texture, the opacity, so we can create the ambient occlusion on the inside. Now that ambient occlusion is going to act like our shape. Okay, so I'm going to plug this back into the normal and show you. So originally, originally we had this for our shape. Quite sharp. And it doesn't give us a lot of detail. So if we invert, okay, so we invert and then we put an ambient occlusion on, we can now soften those areas. If we look before and after, so before, after, we've softened those areas out. Now, softening the areas is not enough to get a good looking normal map on our foliage. What we also need to do is blur the ambient occlusion, okay? So if we blur the ambient occlusion, what that's doing is giving us more space to have looking thick. So if I turn my opacity now, sorry, my normal intensity up. So let's go back to the ambient occlusion. This is what we get. And if we go back to the ambient occlusion blurred, we get this kind of thicker outline, okay? Now we want this, but we want to use it precisely. So if you look at our normal here again, way too hard so what we actually do is we blur it now when we blur this normal if we invert it that gives us our final sticking out kind of look here that we have but you see we've got some issues where it's still not quite 100 percent but we're getting there we're, we're starting to get the shape we want so if i run a blend and i blend this ambient occlusion with a white background i now have the shape that i'm going for okay so what you can see here is where it starts to go white it's actually blending in so if i plug that here we have this nice kind of blur now where we can get the shape so we have this nice shape going on but again we want to just control these blurs we want to have the right amount of blur for the shape now we can just plug one in and go for that shape or we can go for like a heavier shape. What I like to do is I like to blend the two together using the max lighting, which gives us control of both the high and the low values at the same time. So we can change the thickness, which looks beautiful like that. And we can also change the outer thickness. You see? And this is why we control both of these blurs together. Now this is starting to give us some really nice shaped normals for our foliage. However, we don't have that detailed information on the normal map. So if I actually plug my opacity in now, you'll see what we look at is just this, okay? So now we have that shape of our normal. 
that's what we want. We want that nice 3D look to it, which is why we run through all of these, all of this process to get to this point where we invert, and now we have our final shape. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cancel that invert because I think my normals look better this way. Yeah, I think my normals look better that way. So that's the first step to creating the normal shape is just take the opacity and use the opacity to get the ambient occlusion where we can bevel or bend the foliage to look more 3D. Then we, we go through this process up here again where now what we need to do is we need to take the grayscale information which uh, this is where it's giving me some problems for some reason. Ah, the normals, that's why the normals set to, uh, there we go, if we change that to 16 bit. Oh, ah well, let's just carry on like this. So we have our grayscale here. And what we're gonna do with that grayscale is we're gonna change the values. So we're gonna blur it slightly, which is gonna stop that stepping that we have here. And we're gonna again do two different blurred values, okay? So we've got a medium detail and then a close detail. So we blur with two different blurs and then we blend them together. But this time, instead of blending just the, the textures, which we can do, um, if I go into here, I'm gonna go and use the opacity and I'm gonna go through these. So the multiply, uh, I would say multiply around 0.5 if you're gonna do that process. But if we look at this normal here, um, where we use a normal combine, actually doing is we're combining two normals together and that is going to be our output you see so we now have instead of just one normal coming through we have the two so we have the close information and we have the medium information okay so we've built up the far information here so we plug that in there's the far information but now we need the close information so how do we do that well we use the normal combined node and we combine the two normals together. So we've got close and far. This will give us this. Make sure that you change the technique to high quality, okay? Detail oriented is high quality. Now, again, we're gonna use a normal blend, okay? Because what we're gonna do with this normal blend, we can use a normal combine. And just to show you, to demonstrate, we can use a normal combine or the normal blend. Okay, now I personally feel like the normal blend gives you a nice sharp result. However, you can still use the combine and get those kind of results here. There's, there's no problem of doing that. I just like my normals looking like this. So we can use the normal blend and this will just use the opacity mask, okay? It's very simple, just plug this mask into the normal blend and then we're gonna blend the combined medium and close detail with the um, the large shaped detail and when we put that through you see here there's the large shape detail here's the smaller details and when we combine them together we get this shape now where we have normal information on each of our fronds on our little clovers on the grass on the flowers everything we, we've got this nice information so again, we can either use the normal combine to plug straight in. We have this final result here, which I'm very happy with. It looks beautiful. We have a lot of normal detail going on. And that's how we create the normal. Now, obviously we, we have our albedo, so we could theoretically just plug our albedo straight into the albedo. And of course the opacity straight into the opacity. 
and there's our final result but I like to do a little bit of tweaking so again I'm gonna get my ambient occlusion the same way I did earlier in fact I also get an ambient occlusion from the grayscale information and this allows me to create my ambient occlusion for the foliage so I can run a histogram scan on this ambient occlusion which I'm not actually using here anymore, so don't worry about. Yeah, I think uh, just plug the ambient occlusion straight in. Ah, there we go. So the histogram scan sort of like masks it off slightly. And then obviously convert it to a grayscale because you can't blend color. You need it to be a grayscale. And that's just to put an ambient occlusion on top. So if we look here, um, without the ambient occlusion, and then with the ambient occlusion, we get that extra little bit of detail. So we just put that on top. And then the same process again. So with our normal, what we can do is we can run a curvature. So I'm gonna hold tap space and type in curvature smooth. My curvature smooth here allows me to get highlight information which I can invert and use as a mask for creating like a variation of my foliage. I can also use that to create the curvature, which I can place on top of my final output. And again, if we look at the difference, let me just plug that in. So off and on, you see we get this nice little variation going on done a little bit too much tweaking with my shape so let me do the histogram in fact not just invert here we go probably use the histogram again just to change some of the flow so yeah looking a little bit better so all I'm doing here is just blending two different colors together to try and get it looking more autumn-y. This allows you to be able to control the look of the final outcome. So we can make the foliage look more or less weathered, which is a good um, practice. And then we have our finals all over here. Okay, so we've got our PBR validate, which will tell us whether or not the PBR is accurate. Now, in some cases, it could be slightly too white, slightly too dark. And with foliage though, you kind of can get away with this process. So it, I would put some highlights and shadows in my foliage anyway, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. And again, you could get away with those, um, those kind of things here. And then for the roughness, we've just basically just blended some different colors together and then overlaid that on top of the, the roughness that we have made for it, which allows us to get the right amount of luminosity into it. And that is the whole process that we've done here to create all of the outputs. 